All right, so today we're talking about ESLint, an extremely popular JavaScript linter. Here's the homepage, eslint.org, the pluggable linting utility for JavaScript and JSX. So what is a linter? Apparently the term was coined back in 1978. There was a piece of software that was made to find bugs and issues uh, in code. And the idea was lint was derived from the name of the undesirable bits of fiber and fluff found in sheep's wool. And I strongly recommend you never Google image search lint. I was having a great day today and then I saw this belly button lint and I just haven't been the same since. Just want to be normal again. So that's the origin of the name, but what does a linter actually do? Well, it analyzes your code without executing it. That part's very important. To find anything ranging from glaring issues, style problems. Now, JavaScript is a great language, but it is very flexible, let's put it that way, and it gives you a lot of freedom to write bad code, to dig yourself into a hole. And part of this is that JavaScript is kind of unique in the fact that there are no versions, uh, there are no updates to JavaScript, it's this one continuous thing. There are so many older bits of JavaScript that you can still use because browsers still support them. There are patterns that you can still use that might not be best practice today. And the fact that JavaScript is a dynamic language, it's loosely typed, means that there's a lot that can go wrong. So ESLint is very, very helpful. And I'm gonna show you how I like to set it up with VS Code to make things super easy. Oh, before I forget, here is a nice page that shows some of the very, very large companies using ESLint. Facebook, Airbnb uses it, PayPal, Microsoft is on here somewhere, Netflix. So some very large companies trust ESLint. Uh, it's a really, really great project and it's definitely worth knowing about. All right, so how do we use it? How do we install it? How do we get it set up? Well, there's really two answers to how you can use ESLint. You can install it globally on your computer. So first of all, it's written with Node. It's a package that you install using NPM, but you have two choices. Do you install it globally or in your particular local project? And it's easier to do it globally. It's easier to run after the fact. But on the actual web page for ESLint, they recommend that you don't do that. They recommend you do not install it globally and that you should install it locally in each project. And the main reason for this is that it makes it easier to collaborate with other developers um, on individual projects and have different rules. You can still have different rule sets and different um, style guides and all that that your code adheres to if you do use ESLint globally, but in general, it's easier and it's just better to do it locally. And the official homepage recommends you do this. So let's do it. The first thing I'm going to do is hop over here to my terminal. I have an empty folder. Let's pretend I'm starting a new project. So in this new project, I'm gonna have an app.js. So I'm gonna make that file. And I'm going to initialize npm in here with npm init-y. So now I have my package.json. And then I'm going to install eslint. So npm install eslint dash dash save. It will take a moment. Uh, and while that's happening, let's talk about how eslint works, how we set up the rules. So eslint relies on a file called eslintrc. And in that file, you can specify rules. So if we take a look at rules under the ESLint documentation, these are some of the default rules that ESLint comes with. You can set up your own, you can turn these on and off, you can use existing rule sets from companies like Airbnb, which I'll show you. So let's take a look at one of these, which is called quotes. And this is a rule that you can use to enforce consistent use of all double quotes or all single quotes or backticks if you prefer. And the way that you configure this is in the ESLint RC file, you need to specify double, single, or backtick. But back to setting up ESLint, I believe it's finished. Okay, so we don't really see anything new aside from a node modules directory. So ESLint is downloaded in this folder, but now I need to initialize it. So this is a command I always forget. It looks like this. It's dot slash node modules slash dot bin slash eslint dash dash init, depending on where you're running it from. But when I run this, I'm gonna get a little survey. It's gonna ask me, how do I wanna use eslint? To check syntax only, to find problems and check syntax, or to do these three things, enforce code style, find problems and check syntax. Let's do the last one. Then it asks, what type of modules does your project use? 
Uh, I'm going to just say JavaScript modules, even though I'm probably just going to have a single app.js file with no import and exports. Am I using a framework? I'm not. But if you were, you would select one of those. Am I using TypeScript? Nope. Where does my code run? Let's say it runs in the browser. And then I have a choice. ESLint wants to know, how do we define a style for this project? Are we going to use a popular style guide? We are. I'll probably use Airbnbs. But you can also answer questions that it will ask you about your style. Or you can have it look at existing code that adheres to your styles that you like, and it will use that. Most of the time, I either use a popular style guide, or if I'm doing work with a company that has their own style guide, their own ESLint file, then I just use that. So if I select the first option, we can use the standard Airbnb or Google. I like the Airbnb style guide, so I'm going to start with that one. Now we have a choice. One last choice. I think this is the last one. What format do I want my config file to be in? So when we define rules and we override rules or change rules, we have different options for how we want to actually write them, what type of file. I tend to do JavaScript or JSON. I just don't really like YAML, but all of them will work just fine. Now, because I said I wanted to use Airbnb style guide, it now needs to go and download a dependency or a couple dependencies to make that work. So I'm going to install that now. Y for yes. And I guess I'll just edit this out until it finishes. So I'm going to open this up. Um, first thing you'll see if I do an ls-a, we now have a hidden file, eslintrc.js. It is a JavaScript file because that's what I selected. But you might be surprised to see that it's pretty empty. This is all we see. Under rules, there's nothing. But that's because we're using Airbnb base. You can see it's extending Airbnb base. So to find that, if we go into node modules, scroll down, I think it's under is it ESLint Airbnb. Here it is, ESLint config Airbnb. You can click under rules and see all of the rules that they've set up spread across a bunch of different files. But for example, if we look at the style section, it says, let's, let's find a simple one, capitalize comments. You can see that it's set to off. What else do we have? Uh, dangling comma, function call spacing, and then there's a link to every rule. If you wanted to click on this link to learn more about it and why or how it works, um, what is allowed, what's not allowed. So there's a ton of these rules, even though our ESLint RC file is basically empty. So we don't need to go into too much detail about the rules. I'll probably do a different video uh, more in depth on customizing ESLint and working with rules. But for most people, just working with a built-in style guide and built-in rules will work out just great. Okay, so how do we use it? Well, first we need some code. All right, so here's some code. And it's all valid code, um, as far as I know. <laughs> I might have made a mistake, I haven't run it. But there are some definite style issues. I'm using underscores here, snake case instead of camel case. Um, what else do I have going on here? This is a super long single line expression here. Um, here I'm using new string, which is not a very good idea. Um, I think I have a video on this somewhere. If you want to understand why, it's not a good idea. Anyway, there's a couple of issues here. And if I want ESLint to tell me about them, then I need to run ESLint and then tell it app.js. Though what I like to do, because I always forget this, is to come to my package.json and under scripts, I'll add in another script called lint and have it run. Whoops, I forgot my quotes. And then app.js. Okay. So now if I run npm run lint, it will just do this command for me. It's a lot easier to type and remember. So let's test it out in my terminal over here. Let's clear this and we'll do npm run lint. It takes a moment and there we go. Yeah, it's a lot. And this is not usually how I use ESLint. Instead, we'll connect it to an editor like VS Code. But you can see there's some simple ones like I defined a function, never used it. Uh, add nums is not camel case. I defined a variable and never used it. Strings must be single quote, but I have double quote strings mixed with single quotes. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that are wrong. So you could use this and just go back and fix those errors on your own. Remember, this code has not been run. It's only analyzing the code as it is. So instead of doing that, I like to use VS Code. There's an extension you can install 
called ESLint here. I think, yeah, I have it disabled right now, but all you need to do is install ESLint. And then if you go to your settings, command comma, under ESLint, let me turn it back on. Where are you? Enable. And I go to my app.js, all of a sudden, I have a whole bunch of red squiggly lines, little spell check lines. And if I hover, you can see there's two issues for add nums. First of all, I never used it. And second of all, it's not in camel case. So I can fix that. Let's do add nums. Now it's in camel case, but I still never use it. So let's call add nums again, 10, 20. And now there's no error. It doesn't like this. It wants a space after the comma. So I can add that in myself, but I'll also show you one really nice option. If we go back to settings is to use what they call auto fix. Where are you? ESLint right here, auto fix on save down here. I have a button ESLint. Let's click on it. Go to problems. Here is a list of all of the problems, quite a few of them. And now if I save, I just enabled that auto fix. My code gets a lot shorter. It can't fix everything because there's issues like the fact that I created a variable called people and never used it. Same thing for say hi. And then there's things like the console statement. I'm using console.log and in the Airbnb style guide, one of the rules is that they don't want you to use console.log. So the last thing I'll show you here is that we can conflict or overwrite something like the Airbnb style guide. Let's go, what is it called? No console was the rule. You can see the name here, ESLint, no console. And all we need to do first, make sure we understand how it works. It's called no console and we want to set it to off. Okay, that's pretty easy. So let's go into our ESLint RC. We have rules right here and we'll set no console to be off and save. And you can see already that went away. I don't have these console.log issues anymore. Now I still have plenty of other issues, uh, but these are ones that it can't auto fix. So it's just identifying problems and it makes it much, much easier for, for me to write cleaner, more coherent, and just better code. It can highlight issues like the fact that I have to find stuff that I'm not using. It's just a great tool. So I highly recommend you check it out. And I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please leave suggestions in the comments for future video topics. I'm realizing that all of my videos that take off and do well on YouTube are either about VS code or extensions or colors. None of the super technical ones get very far, uh, but I don't want to become someone who only does sort of the simpler content. So I really appreciate any likes or comments on the more technical videos, the ones that may not do as well. Um, just give them a little boost. Anyway, thank you, and I hope you're having a great day and that you've maybe recovered from that horrifying belly button lint. Oh, gosh.